Hey, how's it going guys? So today I am working on assembling uh, my short block. Uh, this is the EJ22T you guys have seen in the past. Um, I got all the machine work done and everything, so um, we got the bearing clearances checked. So I had to end up buying three different sets of bearings to get the ones that fit correctly. Um, the, cl the clearances on, on Subaru motors are really, really tight compared to other motors. It basically has to be between like four tenths and uh, twenty thousandths. That's like in between spec. Um, that's of an inch. Um, so these are on the tighter side of uh, of the clearances. I think some of them are on like eight tenths or eight nine tenths, something like that. And for pretty much all of them, they're all basically the same. Um, and all my rod clearances were about the same as well. They're all about. Let's see this one. Yeah, this one was about eleven thousandths. Um, but these are the uh, EJ257 rods that I'm using. Um, so these are out of an S like an 06 STI. And this is my 22T crank that came out of this block that's phase one. Um, I got the ARP uh, rod bolts um, and ACL rod bearings. These bearings are actually OEM because I the first two sets I bought were ACL um, I got them up here and they were actually wrong so the first set was for a phase two so the thrust bearing was in the wrong spot and um, the second set were just way out of clearance so um, I ended up just getting oversized um, OEM bearings because you can buy these from the dealership so they're just they're, they're about a thousandth of an inch thicker material so that actually just closes that gap a little bit and that put me right in the sweet spot. Um, you can't really plasti gauge these engines because the clearances are so tight you can't really get it perfect with, the, with plasti gauge so I was lucky enough to have the machine shop um, clearance it for me so I just brought it to him like this with the with, you know no crank in it just the bearings and he used his bore gauge measured it there and compared it you know on the corresponding uh, main bearing so um, luckily it's all good to go now so I can uh, start putting it together I've just been working on uh, cleaning up my pistons so this is number two um, this one's all clean these are just the stock 22T pistons that came out of this motor this motor had like 135,000 miles on it or so something like that this is actually the motor that came out of Forrest's 91SS so it's kind of cool that I'm rebuilding it and putting it in my wagon. But you can see this is what the pistons looked like before. This is number four. They're pretty disgusting, so I got to get these cleaned up. The main thing I really got to do is get inside these ringlands and get all the crap out of them because there's just caked on um, like old oil and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going through and cleaning up. Um, the oil retention rings, getting all these clean and keeping them in order. You know, so they, they have to be in a very specific order and they have to be right side up. Because um, some of these, like this one, is the oil scraper ring, I believe. And this one actually has a little lip on it that's supposed to go in the right position. So if you just do them one at a time and lay them out like this, um, you, you know, you clean them up, put them back in, and um, they'll all be in order and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, that's the, this one is, I've already gotten this one cleaned up, sort of. I need to clean it a little bit more, but all the ring lands and everything are clean. So uh, the rings can sit in there and move freely. That's nice. Um, so I want to make sure it's not going to burn oil. Um, I do need to check my bearing, or I mean uh, my ring gap. That's one thing I still have not done, so I'm going to do that on camera so you guys can see. But uh, I still got to get this stuff cleaned up, so... I'm going to keep working on that. Okay, so the next thing i got to do is I need to take the block apart again um, and clean everything. The, everything has to be clean as humanly possible. Like, you have to get every little bit of dirt and, like, lint and, like, anything you can possibly could possibly get in the engine. You, you don't want anything on there. So um, I'm going to split the block again. Um, it's really easy if you haven't done it before. Um, you just take all the case bolts out here, there's some in here, there's two inside the coolant passages in here, and then there's four, and these coolant passages are over here, and two right there. 
and then a couple underneath the block and I mean you just kind of pull it apart and then use like a rubber mallet like this to just kind of knock it apart you really do not want to ever use anything other than a rubber mallet or a plastic one because um, this this whole block is aluminum so you can you can ruin the entire thing and <clears throat> very easily by hitting it with a regular regular hammer so and if it's not if it's not splitting apart like if it's really struggling with you and it's not coming apart make sure you have all the bolts out again because I'll be there for you call me when you're lonely dancing on the roof it feels like rendezvous you know what to do keep your love for me only I get high on you yeah you hey baby kiss me hard don't kill my vibe all my feelings don't Alright, got the block split apart. Um, it's pretty easy. Now I just gotta clean everything, uh, make sure. Oh, uh, see these, there's 18 bolts total if you include uh, the little 10 mil that's underneath in the oil galley thing and by underneath the oil pan. So if you wanna count them, there are 18 bolts all together before you, you have to split the case. So um, these are the only ones that are kind of special. Um, I mean, they all kind of, it's kind of hard to put them in the wrong place because they all are kind of special. But these have a washer on them that has a gasket because these are actually, actually live inside the, the uh, coolant galleys. So you need to make sure you go to Subaru, like your de local dealer or whatever, and get new washers that have the rubber gasket built in. Uh, I don't know, you can't really tell on these because they're so old, but there's a rubber gasket on that. So I got new ones for those. So I gotta get those on there, get them cleaned up. But first I gotta clean all this stuff. Okay, so I got it mostly cleaned up. I'm gonna do some more cleaning, but the next thing I'm gonna do is actually install these oil squirters, um, or oil jets, if that's what Subaru calls them. Uh, this is the part number, but as far as I know, this has been, this is a discontinued part. Um, so it's a little nerve wracking to put these back in. Um, you gotta use, you know, like the Permatex, red thread locker because it's like the strongest stuff and it's a tiny tiny little like eight mil head on that or, um, on that bolt so and it just kind of goes in down in there in that little hole in the cylinder down at the bottom I don't know if you can see that okay I got them in <laughs> very scary I just used this little eight mil quarter drive ratchet because you don't want to use anything too big because I mean these things if this broke off, like you're screwed. Like you'd have to, I'd have to bring us to the machine shop. It'd be, so, oh my god, it'd be such a nightmare. Um, I also picked up some of this engine assembly lube. I'm gonna put that on the bearings when I put the crank in. Right now, I'm just putting these washers right here that have the gasket in them. As you can see, they're like rubber on the inside. So these go on the bolts that go in the coolant galleys. So I was just measuring the piston uh, ring gap. So this is the top ring the main compression ring for cylinder number two. Um, I just measured it and it is uh, 0.28 millimeters. So you can see if we just, once you get, you have to put the ring in there and then I just take the piston and kind of put it in the top to kind of square it. Make sure it's like even all the way around because if it's crooked in there you get a bad reading. So I just slide that in there. And it should slide in easily some reason it's not doing it now. Yeah, you see. So it slides in nice and easy. You don't want any friction really. Um, and the next size up, which is like 0, 028 or I mean uh, 029 or 0, uh, 0 0.30 or so whatever. So I just measured the second ring and it is perfectly at 048. Uh, which is perfect because I mean the, the spec on the second ring is between 0.35 and 0.50 and it's okay, so I got a little bit of a assembly lube on there I'm gonna put the o-ring in here for the uh, coolant passage and then there's these three o-rings for the oil passages so I'm just gonna drop those in here like that 
and then I got to put uh, lube on this side. And I'm going to put the crankshaft down on this side, and then I'm going to put all my RTV on this side. So then I can just pick this up and put it over on top, um, and then seal it. So what I'm actually going to do is you put the rear main seal on the end of the crankshaft first. Uh, the guy at the machine shop told me about this trick, so this makes sure that you know the the gasket or uh, the um, rear main seal when you put it in doesn't affect the RTV on the block. Okay. So I'm going to put my RTV on. I'm using this stuff right here, the ultra black. Some people use the ultra gray. Some people use the ultra black. It's really up to you. Okay, so this is how I did the RTV. This is how I've seen other people do it. You just put a really thin layer and you just kind of use your finger and cover everything and try not to get it like in the bearings or anything. Um, and then we're just going to pick up this whole half and put it on over that side. So um, you don't want a lot of RTV on this because the clearance between the two block halves is really, really small. So any extra RTV is just going to get pushed out the side and you don't want RTV like inside your block that could get caught in a ring or in a bearing and mess something up. People have blown up motors that way. So I feel like this is a nice good amount of RTV. It's not too thick. It's just a nice layer I just put on with my finger. Um, so I'm just going to put the case over um, and then tap it down with a hammer. Um, so all of these small bolts on the outside here are all going to be torqued to 20 foot-pounds. I think it's like 18 or 19 is the torque. I just I just do it to 20. Um, and all the ones on the inside, the big ones, like these right here and the ones inside the, the coolant jackets, those are going to be set to, uh, what does it say, um, 35 foot-pounds. So we just kind of start in the center. With this one, this is like A, then you go B, C, and you just kind of like go around in a big circle and do the other on the other side at the same time and just make sure you, you know, start in the center and work your way out just like anything else. Okay, so we got the pistons all cleaned up and ready. Um, we just positioned the rings. So the way you're supposed to do it is this is piston number two. And so the arrow right here points towards the front of the motor. And so the top compression ring points to the back right here. And then the next ring down is 180 degrees off towards the front. And then the oil rings, there's a little ting right there for the top one. So it, it can't move. And then the other one... Um, goes up here in the top corner so they're both kind of in the corners like that and that's pretty much it so now we're gonna put this on 
over the piston. And we already got number four in, so we're gonna drop it in there, and then try to line up the uh, line up the rod with for the wrist pin to go in. Okay, so we got that one in. Uh, it's a huge pain, as you guys saw in the time lapse. We had to go up and down, up and down with it until you get the rod lined up with the with the piston. Because if it doesn't line up, it just stops, and you got to basically knock it back out from the other side and start all over. So now I just need to put uh, a little clip, a little C-clip, in there uh, with some needle nose, and repeat that process two more times. All right, so we got uh, the rest of the pistons in. This is one and three. Um, it's a real pain to get the C-clip in through this hole because it's such, it's such a deep um, hole down there. So, But they're all in. Everything's, everything looks good. So um, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, you know, leave them in the comments. Um, hopefully this thing works because this is my first time putting one of these together. So if I can do it, you can do it. All right, see you guys next time.